One of the most frequently asked questions I receive about the Bible is, what about when Joshua and the nation of Israel entered the land of Canaan? They were instructed to wipe out every man, woman, and child of certain tribes. I've talked to some people whose entire rejection of the Bible and God rests on this portion of the biblical text. This video is for those people. What no one ever mentions when recounting this issue is that according to the story itself, the tribes that they killed were non-human hybrids called the Nephilim, and they were huge. They had iron beds 13 feet long and 6 feet wide. It says that the Israelites were like grasshoppers in the sight of the Canaanites. These Nephilim were the offspring of very evil spiritual beings, and they were apparently the primary reason God sent the flood. Satan knew of the prophecies of one that would come to defeat him, and before any of the prophets came to expand on how this was to occur, all he knew at that point was that the Messiah would be a human. The Nephilim were an attempt to infiltrate the entire bloodline of humanity so that the Messiah could not be a full-blooded man, and if it weren't for Noah and his family, it would have worked. Then when Abraham found out from God that the land of Canaan was to be given to Abraham, Satan also found out, and he had over 400 years to plant this minefield of Nephilim in the land of Canaan in an attempt to thwart the plan of God. Genesis 6-4 tells us that the Nephilim were also on the earth after the flood, and it is them who Joshua was told to wipe out. Tribes such as the Rephaim, the Emim, the Horam, the Zamzumim were all giants. The kingdom of Og was the land of the giants. Later we also find Arba and Anak and his seven sons, the Anakim, also giants, along with the famed Goliath and his four brothers. Now if you want to say, well, God should have let the 13 foot tall evil hybrids bent on the destruction of humanity for the purpose of wiping out any chance for the redemption of man go, then you're free to think what you want. But please remember, this is according to the biblical narrative itself which is where the accusations come from in the first place. The point is that if you're going to claim that you know that God is a tyrant because of this portion of the Bible and you didn't know the rest of the story, just think about how many other issues there are in regard to the Bible where you might have misplaced animosity. It may be that you just are in need of further study. You can email me sometime and we can talk about it. Thank you for your time.